starting uh, last Tuesday, the anniversary service, starting with uh, Pastor Twine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was talking about the Lord is on our side. Yeah. Then you had Pastor Stephon Bailey. Yeah. And he talked about running the race. Yeah. The building. Yeah. Then you had Brother uh, McNeil yeah. come and preach. And I don't recall what his message was about, but he had a lot of energy <laughs> to go with. Amen. And then uh, Pastor Vimbich, he uh, came and he preached. He tore up. He kind of shook me up when he preached. But he said, what are you doing here? And when he asked that, it, it made you really sit and think about it. You can't look for ground. It had you to kind of participate. You had to ask that question yourself. And so we want to continue to celebrate these anniversaries of uh, six years. And I'm going to talk on the topic of the non-traditional meal. All right. Amen? The non-traditional meal. I ask that you turn with me in the book of Acts, 10th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 9. Where everybody getting that, I just want to, um, as I look around, I want to thank my older sister pastor. She's the nurturer of this gift and the keeper of the belt All right. that my mother gave me. I tell her about this story. I, I wanted to leave the open so bad, I ran away. Literally. But my sister Ann, right here, raise your hand. Amen. Old correction officer, police officer. <laughs> now she works at Cheltenham. <laughs> All the life she's been hard. Like, whatever it takes, you can be something. But you won't sit around here and do nothing. <laughs> and so, I thank God for a deal. Also, Lydia. She's a matchmaker. That's how I met Carissa. <laughs> Grandmother Paige, she up there trying to set us up. I say, hey, we ain't here for that. <laughs> Amen. But I thank you. Yes. So as you all have it in your word, Acts chapter 10, verse 9. And we're going to read up to 16 and read it so. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And so heaven opened, and an object like a great sheep bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals to, of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Mm -hmm. This was done three times. Mm -hmm. It's something about that three. Three times for Peter. Yeah. And the object was taken up into heaven again. All right. You may be seated in the presence of Lord. The non-traditional meal. Statistics say 50.2 Americans, including 17.2 million children, are hungry. Don't have enough food to eat on a regular basis, or don't have the money or assistance to get enough food to maintain active 
healthy lives. A rise of about 6% in the price of grocery has led the poor to adapt a variety of survival strategies. From buying old expired grocery food to only receiving a discount voucher for food at the food bank. You know the value of a food bank. We collected food and we took it around to the food bank and they were excited to have it because it is a great famine in the land. Some people lie or exaggerate, over-exaggerate the circumstances due to greed, gluttony, and fear so they can only receive gain to someone else's expense. It's an epidemic. All right. Can somebody identify with this lifestyle? Yeah. You remember party meat <laughs> with saltine crackers. We didn't really like it, but we ate it because they told us we were poor when it had nothing. Sardine, sardine and hot sauce with a little cap of vinegar. You know, little pigs feet. Welfare cheese, pork in a can made the good barbecue. We all had it. The young generation, I'm sorry, Kenneth. You know. <laughs> the young generation didn't have to worry about this. They didn't know about it, but they heard of an EBT car. They used the EBT car. It was for the baby. But they lied. They wouldn't have bought shrimp, fish, crabs, steak, crab cakes. Help me out. Somebody know this. Amen? So the USDA really found that about 96 billion pounds of food available for human consumption in the United States were thrown away by retailers, restaurants, farmers, households, community-based groups over the course of a year. Just look at it. Over this week, we had a great service, great meal, but a lot was thrown away. Just this Saturday, celebrating the sixth year of Pastor's anniversary, had a strong just ball and a meal to go with. Well, but much of the food was wasted. Well, Some people didn't even touch their plates. Right. So we're talking about food. We're talking about starvation, famine in the land. Yeah. I'm trying to paint a picture here of this waste and possibly cure to the starvation and hunger. Amen? Right. So also fresh fruits, milk, some grain, sweeteners, get this, account for two-thirds of this waste. Fruit, vegetables, grain. The necessities that we need that were wasted to account for two-thirds of this loss. I thought about this and I present the question to you. What is this hunger? Hunger, I remember. My mom always said, you're hungry? I said, yes. I don't get to tell her what I want to eat. I just sit down and eat. Whatever she put there, you can eat it and you better not get up until she finishes that plate. She's always putting carrots down in there. You gotta eat your vegetables. But these carrots were nasty for some reason. I just didn't like them. They made me, every time I eat carrots, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I just, and then when she dug her head, I go into the table. Then a nap. I had no dog to give it to because we need that food. So I didn't have a, a remote pastor. We went to that porch. So when the food came, we ain't had nothing to waste. We ain't had nothing to give nobody. We can divvy it out and do what we do. Amen? In your Webster, Collegiate Dictionary, yes. it defines hunger as this, a feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by simple, simple lack of food, coupled with a desire to eat. Discomfort and desire caused by hunger. I want to ask you, but I ain't want to look at nobody, but I can hear you. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? And shepherds carrying them, they in the kitchen, they preparing them, the, the grits and the eggs and all that. And some people, because they are hungry, lose focus, it says it, and have a desire. And with these desires, they call something strange. So when you go without something to eat, you get weak. You start craving and have these desires for all kinds of thoughts. You see, hunger will have you craving and crazy. Your traditional things, such as the lust of the flesh. You get hungry, you start doing things to get something to eat. Amen? You spend money that you don't have. And you don't listen to the word because you feel you're weak and you're faint and you can't focus. 
We always talk about focus. Check your stomach. Make sure you got some in it so you can stay alert. Amen? Punch your neighbor and ask him, did you focus? Don't focus on the circumstance, but are you hungry? So we can ask him, are you hungry? Because God has something for you to eat today. Check it out. It started in the creation. God in the God planted a, a, a garden in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, chapter 2, verse 8. I tell you the story. In the east of Eden, he planted this garden so we can have all that we need so there wouldn't be no hunger. Scripture says it was beautiful. It says out of the ground grew tall trees that was pleasing and good for food. It wasn't just beautiful, but it was good also. So it was eye candy, but you could have some. That's the good thing about it, fruits and vegetables. Like my brother Dick said when he's trying to give a good speech, that good stuff, that good water, that good vegetable, that good fruit. You know, he's passionate about it when he's saying it. But all this was in the garden, amen? God has put it there for us. But through being hungry, you start focusing on things that you can't have instead of what God put before you. Adam and Eve. God planted in the garden these great vegetables in a great diet form, but they ate the things that they couldn't have and it messed them up. So as a result, I looked at it, Eve didn't realize that God put this in there. It was a feast. They let us suck. She didn't have to pay for anything. Adam didn't have to pay for anything. David understood it. He said, when he was hungry, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't have to want for anything when he was weak in the 23rd Psalm. When he was feeling this crazy, he called on the Lord. He knew that he should supply all his needs. He didn't have to want for anything. He knew when he was hungry, the Lord would feed him. He knew that he could uh, get double for his trouble. When he's feeling the physical or spiritual uh, stress, God feel it. He said, he will prepare a table in the presence of my enemy. God set it out for him. He set it out, uh, my valley. He edited. He was doing an edit. We do edit on the 20th. So on the 20th of April, you'll see the edit how God prepares a table before his people so that you can eat. Amen? So in this, God prepared this for David. So David knew something about this. Then the prophet Isaiah even knew a little something about it. He was told, quoting in uh, Isaiah 55, verse 1 and 2. Jesus said, Ho, anyone who thirsts, come to this war. And you're going to have no money. You don't need no money. So you ain't got to worry about starving or being thirsty. He says, come. You know, there is a reason for starvation and hunger in the land. When you don't listen to what the Lord said. Jesus says, come. Buy and eat. He said, without money and without price. He said, in delight and abundance, it is here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So that leads me to go into the text here, looking at the brother Peter, the apostle Peter, in the book of Acts. He was hungry. Yeah. Yeah. He say, it says that in verse 10 of chapter 10, it says that he became hungry. Yeah. Matter of fact, he said the brother was real hungry. Yeah. He fell in a trance. Yeah. He got antsy. Yeah. You know when you're hungry, you stop. You know, focus on uh, your answer. You get angry, a little delirious, you have strong craving. He couldn't focus. He was angry. Uh, he was just messed up. He lost his memory. He started displaying a selfish control. I'm not making it up. It's in the book, and I'm showing it to you. It's in there. He said, I'm hungry, but I'm not eating it. And I'm hungry too right now. My stomach growling too right now. I'm not glad to. But I'm feeding on this tradition of God being the word. I'm going to get the word. Because joy of the Lord is our strength, amen. God, God, I see us apply all our need. We never have to go without. And so in there, we're going to look at it. Take a look at verse 11. It says, and it refers to Peter. It says, Peter was hungry in 10. And said he fell into a train. Read verse 11 with me. And so heaven opened. And an object like a great sheep bound at the four corners. Descended to him and let down to the earth. God set it out for him. Every time you hunger, you call upon the Lord, he sets the table before you that you don't have to pay for. It's right there. But all the two times, we tell the Lord what we don't want, and we don't do certain things, but we go and get our own thing. And that calls us to be in sin. God laid it out for people. Amen. The Lord personally prepared for Peter this table. But because Peter used to traditional meals, this wasn't traditional. He rejected the Lord. Yeah. Amen? And because he rejected the Lord, he went on hungry and he went without. Yeah. Amen? Uh -huh. And so, to me, he forgot where he came from. Yeah. You know how when the Lord brings you somewhere? 
you forgot where you come from when you used to eat the potted meat and all those things. Now because you got a little taste of something greater, you said, oh, I ain't doing that, they ain't me. Peter forgot he was one of the dirty dozen. He was one of the 11 plus one who Jesus had to pull out the mess and take him into the promise that he gave him. Amen? So don't forget Peter where you come from. He should have known some about Adam and Eve in the garden where God set before them in the spirit this great speech for them to eat. Whether it's spiritual or physical, God knows what's best for you. God knows what's best for you. I see now, I see Pastor, I see Peter was offended also with what was presented to him because he was hungry. I told you you get all kind of antsy, you lose your mind, you get crazy when you're hungry. So he rejected the Lord, the good things that the Lord had gave to him. Being a fisher, Peter knew what good food looked like. So I, I can't blame him, I'm not mad at the brother. But I believe he was African American. So we like fish too. You know, we like our catfish, we like spot, rock, uh, bass, salmon, uh, croaker, all those things. Amen? And so he was real hungry and he really, really wanted to eat. And he was acting strange though. He didn't understand that God was there to feed him. But being around the Lord, he didn't understand because he had an unfortunate sense of entitlement. You know how it is, Pastor, when we hang around you long enough, we, know we, know, we think we know your angle, where you're coming from. We can tell you what we want you to do and what we think the Lord is saying, and you're the head of the sheep for this sheep, this block. But we come, and we try to tell the Lord what we to eat. No, God, I don't want that. God, I don't want to do that. That's not my ministry. I'm supposed to do that. I only come to sit on Sundays. I ain't coming to Bible study on Wednesday. I don't want discipleship on Tuesday. I come out of the whole Sunday with choir rehearsal or anything else, but I ain't sitting under the Word. I'm going to go in the back and get me some sleep. Simply, God told Peter, rise, kill, eat. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. You don't tell the Lord what you're going to do. The Lord was speaking to his spirit. He was physically in a trance, but God kind of spiritually pulled him out of it. He said, not so, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, Lord. Yeah. That's not my duty. I don't eat that type of stuff. I don't eat that. And so Peter had to realize that God was trying to do something in his life because he had that sense of entitlement. Jesus changed his name. You remember he was called Simon. He didn't say Peter the Rock. So the rock, he was acting a little rocky right now. He was losing the kind of delirious because he was built nice and strong, but he was kept falling back every now and then. God was trying to feed him something better than what he was used to. What's wrong with the bro? I know what's wrong with him, and I will tell you, there was clearly something wrong with him. I know what it is. He couldn't see things from God's view, the corner near. He was looking in his physical sense, and God was trying to get him something greater. He says in there, he says, rise, Peter. And he, he had to say this to his brother more than once. And because of the hunger, there was some effects that took place with Peter. Because of that hunger, because of that trance Peter was in, I think there were three things wrong with his brother. Three things I think Peter needed to do to help him in this, to be able to fulfill this hunger that he was having. Three things. First, remove the controversy. Number two, remove the, remember the commandment. Remember the command. Number three, release the control. Amen? Amen. So, God told Peter, he says, rise, mm -hmm. kill, yeah. eat. Yeah. Verse 14, Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Yeah. Peter went through all this with Jesus. He didn't remember that the feast of the Jews, the Passover, the healing, the miracles, the wine, the water to wine, all these things Jesus done. He didn't really believe that salvation was just for the Jews, did he? Do he really believe that? And so Jesus told him, but Peter didn't remember because it's pride. Pride always got in his way. Pride always got in his way. Jesus told him, say, he wished to sift you. And he said, but I pray that your faith don't fail. Peter didn't understand it. He rebuking Jesus. No, Lord, I ain't doing it. Do he remember what was going on in his mind? He needed to remove these controversies. The controversy, though, is Peter was looking at the physical food, and he didn't understand what God was talking about, which is the spiritual food. When he got hungry, and I can tell you, Jesus knew about it when Jesus was hungry. He was in the wilderness for 40 days. He was hungry, and he fed on the Lord's word. The devil tried to tempt him. He passed the test. 
as uh, Elijah. Elijah was trying to do what he was dealing with the Jezebel spirit. The brother preached on it. God fed him, told him to go back to work. He, he, he speaks on the spiritual thing. But my brother Peter, he was looking at the physical thing. He didn't want no spiritual food. He didn't want to go out and make disciples in the world and all the nation like the Lord told him so. So there was a controversy. The Lord said, remove it. You can't do this, and you ain't going to grow Riverside if you don't remove the controversy and the tradition and stop going on the tradition and get the non-tradition so we can bring more people to the pew, save the land. Amen? God says, get rid of and remove the controversy. So that leads me to number two. Peter had to remember the command. I think he forgot the command. He forgot the command. Matthew 28, 19, 20. He says, go the ear all uh, therefore into the nation, and you will baptize, and you will teach in the name of Jesus. God uh, told him, Jesus told him this, this commandment in his glorified body when he came back. It was Peter and the disciples there. But Peter didn't remember this. You know how when you forget the alliance. We forget. We forgot this morning. Amen. And so certain things are set out for us as a church under the auspices, under the auspices of our pastor. But when we get set in our ways, we start to fall back like we really know. Peter act like he really knew what the Lord was talking about, but he didn't. He was physically, he was earthly minded, and he couldn't attain the spiritual things that the Lord wanted him to know. So as a result, we kind of was all focused this morning. We forgot some things this morning. Did you remember? All this celebrating, all this, this was part of our worship. Brothers, we know that word is worship. So did you remember? Did you forget? Did you lose focus? So the Lord trying to tell us something, but because we don't have our mind on the things of the Spirit, we won't attain them. We get lazy. So God saying, wake up. Don't forget. Remember the command that I gave you in the land. Don't he remember? Jesus told him that Satan really wanted to sift you, Peter, but he don't understand. Because of pride, he can't remember. Pride won't allow you to remember. It keeps you blind to the things of God. You remember the commission after that you received the power? Yeah. You would have the Holy Ghost? Yeah. And you would be in Jerusalem and Judea, Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth? You're going to do some great things. Do you remember, Peter? God told him these things. Do you remember, Riverside, the tradition? We continue to celebrate every year. And every time we celebrate, we go right back. We can't press back. We got to continue to go forward and do great things for the Lord. The ministry is forward. The story should be. You remember Riverside. There were no women in here that was prosper the ministry. But now, everything that Riverside do is prosper. You got a woman that's taking place in a party in it. Amen? They were just like Jesus at the cross. The women are always there. Do you remember? Don't forget it. Also, do you remember the participation in things that we're doing in here? The church is growing. Do you remember? Don't forget it. Do you remember the discipleship classes? They're overflowing. They got 60 plus people there. Do you remember SBA is in here? Do you remember Christian education? Do you remember 20 plus preachers? Do you remember? God said, don't forget. But Peter, he forgot. He don't remember what's going on. He turned a deaf ear to what the Lord was saying. So God said, I got to touch this boy. He kept talking to him three times. He talked three times. He's calling him three times. Peter, do you remember three times you denied me? The rooster crowed. You lied. You hated. Three times, Peter. Three times I came to you. I told you, launch in the deep. You said, Lord, I already over here. I'm fishing. But you're not listening. He kept having to tell you. One more time, Peter. He came to you. When he came back, Peter, he said, go get Peter. I'm here. He forgot. Do you remember? This wasn't just for you. Do you remember when you got saved? Come on, family. All the hell that you used to raise and now you got saved and you won't talk to nobody else. It ain't about you. Come on, baby. He said, do you remember? <laughs> Get some people in here. Get over all this stuff that we're going through. Do you remember? God is speaking, Riverside. God is speaking. Do you remember? And as a result, it brings me to my third point. Peter need to release the control. In the counseling, we call it control freaks. You got those who, they are over compulsive. No matter what you do, it ain't good enough. They going through these things, they got the battlefield of the man. Paul talks about it, it's the stronghold. All right, he talks about that wretched man. He says, that wretched man in me, what can save me? Paul knew about that. 
He knew about it. He had a personal experience on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. And so in his personal experience, he said, Lord, save me. Yeah. I'm a controller. I'm a killer. I'm just bad. I'm nasty. Yeah. You know when your family members are nasty, some up here in the church. We argue, we go with each other, but we put on the church face. We won't even shout hallelujah sometimes. We just tell you strictly, hey, I don't like you. That ain't God. That's the flesh kicking in. So as a result, he has to remove this, uh, let go and remove and release this control. Release this control. Jesus told him, launch out, Peter. But Peter set his ways. He wanted to do his old thing, his own thing. God has something great for him. So when he finally listened, he released the control. They had enough fish to feed everybody. And what I realized is when you release the control, God will bless you so much you have enough to give away. I don't understand it now. I understand it. I understand. Dr. Thomas Sr. say, don't block my blessing. I got enough to give away. He said, because when you, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. But you control it, you hold on to those little dollars and you say, no, God, I can't give it to you. I can't trust you, God. But God said, give it out your, what you don't have. Show me that you really love me. And we say on the street, put your money where your mouth is. So we say, give it up. Release the control. Let me bless you. We quote it all the time. You can carry it. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean that to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge me. But see, we drop off them. Worship, you don't let it drop off. Verse 7, though, in there, it says, in verse 7, it says, uh, in that same scripture, and I'm going to get it here, it says, how, it says, and be not wise in your own eyes. Mm -hmm. And so, I can trust in the Lord when I release control, so I won't be wise in my own eyes. That means I don't have the Father last as my father and my soul, which is Satan, who was kicked out of heaven for his disobedience because he didn't want to release control and worship the Lord. Amen? Amen? So as a result, God had to deal with Peter, but he understood. And Peter ain't no better than some of us. God loves us so much. He loved us that he gave his only begotten son. He yeah. said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed should have eternal life. So when he gave his son, God did that for not just me, he did that for my sister. He did that for my wife. He did that for my friend. He did that for those who don't even know that why they were yet in sin that God demonstrated his love and Christ died for us. He didn't do that with a, a selfish nature. He did that with a humble heart. Peter needed to spend more time with the Lord. Amen? And so in there, I will ask you, and that bring me to this, what do you have that you need to release? And we'll look at that in verse 16. It says, this was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven. Mm -hmm. And Peter kept telling what he ain't going to do. Uh -huh. This happened for Peter's salvation. For three, three times, God chose to continue to speak because his salvation was greater than his disobedience. Uh -huh. God really wanted to speak to Peter. He really knew there was something great in Peter. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the rock did become something great. But God had to continue to talk to him. And he had to be quiet. Yeah. Shut up. Enough to listen. Yeah. What the Lord had to say to him. Yeah. So in there, Peter had a problem with food. God wanted him to eat. Mm -hmm. It was non-traditional. Yeah. Yeah. He was thinking about some physical food. Mm -hmm. I ain't eating that God. You know, I don't eat nothing unclean. God was talking about discipleship. Yeah. Yeah. God was talking about saving old people. Yeah. He was talking about these dirty folk that Peter was talking to. was unclean. He was talking about the Gentile. Yeah. He was saying, you can't go and do this with this mindset, Pastor, when you walk around the river and you uh, heavy on the heart and you know that Riverside, the year release, we've been doing some great launching out. Ain't nobody else catching nothing. But God waited for us to hop and see plentiful. But we sitting here with this face like, look at like, 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 like right now. And so God trying to do something so it burdens your heart and put the press on you because we don't do what we're supposed to do. So God said, raise up, get up, rise, kill, and eat, man. Go out somewhere. Stop sitting here, supping up this air, eating the good food, and then you go home. You pack a plate for you, but you don't go spread the word with nobody else. I'm in here, whether you like it or not. Amen? God said, do something with it. It's time out. We was up on the mountaintop, had a greater spirit, but we come back down. 
all hell breaking loose and left the line. We can't get together for some reason. We all over the place. God said, come out from among them. We got to stick together. Rather that hell or half water. We are one. One spirit, one Lord, one baptism. Ain't no mess in Riverside. We gonna kill it at the head. Jezebel got to go. Amen? This is the Lord's house. This is the Lord's house. So Peter don't understand the problem that he had. He could have handled this very, very, very different. So in his life, Peter had to remove the controversy in his life. He had to remember the command, what the word says, what the word says. Release all control to God. We continue to quote that 3 5 of Proverbs. So understand that, but also understand it in a different light. When you're quoting Proverbs, you're talking about doing something for somebody else and not being selfish for yourself. All that I'm saying, y'all, and this is it. You know what Peter needed? The fruit of the Spirit. That's all he needed. Those nine pieces of fruit to change his diet. Those nine pieces of fruit would have helped him out. He didn't want the Spirit. He wanted some flesh. He wanted some what he was used to. The fruit of the Spirit is non-tradition. See, when you got love in you, you got to do something crazy with it. You don't just get to sit on it. You got to get it away. When you got joy in, you got to do something with it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Because I got joy, I got expectation of the Lord to do something great. So when I got joy, I don't just wait and complain. I go, help somebody. Because I got joy. Because I got joy, I don't worry about who can be here preaching. I don't got to preach. I got my brother. I can spirit them on. Because I got joy, I can love you when you're doing good. Because I got joy, I can love you when somebody else up front. Because I got joy, I'm going to celebrate when you get a promotion. When I got joy, I'm not going to hate on you. Because I got joy. And so he said, as a result, you need peace, Peter. You need a little peace in there. You got a controversy in your soul of who can be great or what's going to be done or who you're not going to go to. You got a little something going on. So you need peace, peace, be still, Peter. You need my spirit in you, Peter. And then you need long suffering. You need to go through some stuff. You know, you went through it, but I don't think you really got it. You need to sit here, Peter, and you really need to realize that as you have long suffering, I need to save these people too. Cornelius needs to be saved too, Peter. He was praying, seeking the Lord. And I called you to go get him. But if you don't humble yourself, you can't do this. It wasn't just for you. It was for the Gentile too. It was for Judea. You saw Jude, uh, Jesus at Samaria doing it. He was there and it was strategically planned to go through all these places. So he ain't gonna tell you nothing that he's not gonna do himself. So he said, I started in Jerusalem, the house of God, the place of God, I'm gonna start there. But then I'm gonna make a turn as I go and I'm gonna go to somebody who don't really love me and don't know me. But then I'm gonna go into the whole house, I'm gonna go to the drug dealers, I'm gonna go to the alcoholics, and I'm gonna talk to them too. So Peter needs to know this thing. God is good like that. Don't get it twisted. Peter felt he knew the Lord, but he really didn't. Yeah. But God gave him another chance. Yeah, yeah. He gave him another chance. He didn't let down. He didn't let him down. And then he needs to be kind. Yeah, yeah. There's some kindness in his life. Mm -hmm. He needs some goodness. Yeah. He needs some faithfulness. Yeah. He needs to be a little more gentle. Mm -hmm. Because you can't catch no fish with that nasty attitude. Oh, you can't catch no fish with the, the boo-boo face. I call it the boo-boo face. You're always grinning on somebody. You don't want to smile. You can't catch nothing with that. Nobody's gonna come in real sad if if, if Monday uh, O'Neill. Nobody's gonna come in real sad if don't see your beautiful smile. I thank God for your smile. I thank God for the uh, the greeters in there because you are the front line of what people get to see here in Riverside. So they determine the whole worship experience by what they see in the two people out there. Amen. So I thank God for your obedience. Peter missed it. Peter missed this opportunity. And then the faithfulness keep coming, keep coming. In the book of uh, Hebrews, and he talked about it, uh, running a race. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stephon yeah. Bailey, Pastor Bailey. Yeah. Yeah. And then running the race, it was many people who ran the race, but never made it to the promised land or to the things. And I was talking about you, Monday, um, on the, um, the board, about many people, they had this faith and they died believing, but never got what was promised. Yeah. Yeah. But they still were obedient. Yeah. They still pressed on. They still came out, amen? Yeah, yeah. And then he says, be gentle. Yeah, yeah. Be gentle. Mm. I joke with Carissa all the time. <laughs> I say, you handle me a lot of times like I'm a little rough something. Be gentle. <laughs> Men like to be handled nice. <laughs> Don't put me in the back sometimes. You know? Handle me. I ain't, I ain't no uh, prima donna or nothing, but I'm a man and I like to be handled right. Amen? 
women, give that men like to be handled right too. We don't like to be rocked off all the time. Amen? So get that too. Amen? That's a little something for y'all. <laughs> Amen? Oh, and self-control. Self-control. Peter did it exemplify what Jesus was doing. Simply, Jesus knew how to have power under control. Jesus was all power. Jesus was all power. All, all knowing. He was the king of kings. He was the Lord of lords. He is the doctor, the chief chef. So he know what Peter needs to eat. Amen? But Peter didn't understand him. Jesus walked around with humility. He didn't press upon him. He didn't rub somebody off. He says, I stand knocking at the door. He wants to suck with you. He wants to give you the prepared spread. He wants to, but he can pull you to get it. Amen? So understand and live and know what Jesus did so that you can have these fruits that are change your diet also. Against these things, the fruit of the Spirit, against such there is no law. And those who are in Christ, this has been crucified the flesh. So in that, you won't have no passions or desires if you get the fruit of the Spirit instead of the traditional meal or what you're used to. That's the non-traditional thing. Amen? And Paul says it best. He says, if you're in the spirit, you'll walk in the spirit. Amen? Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> be on God. Watch out. Mm-hmm. When you're hungry, pray. Mm-hmm. See God. Yeah. Because Satan is there to distract you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're supposed to check our diet daily anyway. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And um, anything going on, you got sinus problems and a lot of everything going on, you got to check the code. Yeah. What you put in yourself, your diet. You know, a lot of people say, man, you're real skinny. But I tell them, hey, I'm skinny by choice and not by force. I chose to take this temple and I take care of it for the glory of God. Amen? And so as a result, I have this energy to run all day, to run all day, to run all day. I left here. I worked till 6 o'clock this morning. And then I came here. I sat here and I prayed. I said, God, I'm going to trust your spirit. I need your strength because you are my strength, God. So as a result, I can stand here and I can preach and I can stand and I can proclaim what the word of the Lord has to say to me. Amen. And so when the other say, hey man, you need this, you need this, you need this, no, I'm good because at times we go through this tradition, but we don't really understand what we're saying, what the Lord has for. So be on God, check your spirit. Now let's go back to the God. All Peter had to do was go back to the thought of the God. What was prepared for us in the beginning, in the God. Those fresh fruits, those fresh vegetables, the nice good air. Jesus prepared the place for them. He says, walk in that anointing, Peter. Walk in that anointing. Amen? So I asked you, what is in your diet that you need to change? Check it. Just like Peter, the Lord is always there to give you something greater, but you get so content. You start to reject the things that the Lord has for you because you used to, if you make those great things that once were miracles, you make them traditional. You dogify it. You water it down because now you want God to do something new. But you never please them or worship or thank them for what they put right there the first time. So as a result, we act like Peter. And God wants us also to remove the controversy. Remember the command. Release the control. Amen? Amen. Amen.